It's great. So, hey, welcome to the Hype Magazine live sessions. I, I'm glad to have you on today. I happen to like the movie Reacher, so the fact that they got a series <laughs> named Reacher is oh, yeah. absolutely up my alley. Oh, yeah, so, man. So, we're here talking with Malcolm Goodman. He is going to play Chief Detective Oscar Finley. Yes, sir. And this is a new uh, Amazon Studios and Skydance Media uh, series called Reacher, which they have been running promo for like crazy. Like crazy. And, and also Paramount, too. Paramount, too. It's on Paramount as well? Okay. Yeah, okay. Paramount is one of the producers on it, too. Production okay. companies. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. So Malcolm Goodwin, the actor, director, uh, from the inside looking out, give us the rundown. Uh, on Malcolm Goodman? Well, the rundown on me, um, <laughs> listen, I've, I've had an incredible journey um, as an actor, as an artist. I'm originally from New York City, um, Brooklyn and Harlem. Um, and yeah, I started off going to theater schools um, when I was in junior high school. Um, it it was a way for me to express myself. I had a like a bad speech problem, a uh, speech impediment, stuttered, stammered. But the only times I didn't do that was when I was reciting something, when I was reading something. And that's what that was my comfort zone. So I kind of grew up just being a, a listener more than a talker. And um, and would bring what the stories I would hear, the personalities I would I would take in and absorb to these characters. Um, and whether it's Shakespeare, whether it's, it's, it's August Wilson, Tony T. Williams. And um, yeah, and I decided just to go full steam ahead and focus on, on trying to make that dream a reality. And um, here I am living it. Okay, making it happen. So yeah. what was the, like the defining moment that made you go pro? Just become professional, this is your career. Um, it's like air, I gotta have it. What was it? Man, that's a good question, man. That's a, no one ever asked me that before. That's a good one. Um, you know, the defining moment was, you know, I graduated uh, high school. I went to, it was called Julia Richmond High School in New York City, and the program was called Talent Unlimited. Um, now the school is Talent Unlimited High School. Now the program took over the entire school. But when I was there, it was literally on the fourth floor. It was like two, it was like three classrooms. Um, but yeah, I what. The defining moment for me was I didn't go straight to college after um, after high school. I, I, I was writing plays and I produced a couple of plays and got to see them, you know, got to see them uh, come to fruition. And then I was trying to do some I was rapping for a little while. I had a little rap group. We did like, you know, we did like uh, yeah, I got signed to like this affiliate to Motown. And so I was caught up on a on a um, on a music thing. And then um, it just hit kind of hit some walls with that. And then finally, I think after about six, seven years, I said, you know what? I'm going to audition. I got a, uh, an old monologue that I did in high school. I hadn't done it in about six years. And I'm going to apply to one school, one college. And, and that was SUNY Purchase College. You know, they audition thousands and only select 20 to 25 people. So um, I saw this movie, Life is Beautiful. Um, and it just inspired me so much to chase uh, beauty in my life and what I was missing. And I was like, you know, I never gave this acting thing a real go. I never really gave it my 100%. Okay. And so if I get into this school, I will, give it my, I will give it my all. And I got accepted. And I stayed true to that promise to myself. Okay, okay. And along the way, you had some pretty interesting uh, appearances. Uh, I I'm, never watched uh, They Whisper. I'm not really a, like a thriller. Oh, it's not out yet. It's not out yet. That's oh. still in a, yeah, that's in post. They Whisper. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's that's still in post-production. As well as another movie called Half-Lives. Yeah, that's okay. all in post. Yeah. Okay. But you also did like iZombies. Oh, yeah, man. iZombie, man. That was... Uh, yeah, dude, that was uh, what a dream come true that was. I was five seasons on the CW. Um, that was a Rob Thomas, uh, Diane Ruggiero Wright vehicle, and um, yeah, I was. It was just a, a great cast. I'm still friends with 
everyone to this day. And uh, yeah, it was a, it was just a it was just a, a platform to get better and keep improving. And that's one thing I love about being on different productions and playing with different characters. And you got a chance to direct an episode. You completed the Warner Brothers Directors Workshop. I did, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I I, uh, I applied to it, um, and I got in. And it was an eight week workshop. What's crazy was while I was in the workshop, I was also directing a movie at the same time. Oh, wow. uh, an independent film. So I did the directors workshop on weekends, and during the weekdays, I would um, directing this um, this this musical called Be the Light. Um, but yeah, I did that. And then, yeah, Rob Thomas and Dan Etheridge uh, gave me an opportunity to direct and I jumped on it. I jumped on it. And it was l- literally one of the highlights of my entire five years on that show. Okay. Okay. Now, have you always been on the small screen or have you done big screen stuff too? I've done big screen stuff too. Yeah. Most people know me from American Gangster. That was like the big one. With, really? um, yeah, that was the big one with uh, Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe. And uh, yeah, watching them too, you know, it was a job that literally was supposed to, uh, I, I, I only had one scene originally. And then Ridley Scott kept putting me in more scenes. So this literally, I, this one day of work turned to three months. Wow. Yeah. And, and then next thing you know, I became the snitch. It was like, you're going to become the snitch. I wasn't that originally. I was just a knucklehead cousin who was um, drugged up and shot a cop at a party. And then Zell had a, um, originally the scene was him throwing me into a glass table. But the glad, but when we were rehearsing it, I mean, I, I kind of, my momentum threw me into the piano. And then Zell said, wouldn't this be crazy if I just bang, 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 bang. <laughs> and Ridley said, let's do that. He goes, are you okay being thrown into the piano? I'm like, but, but, yeah, but Denzel, yes, absolutely. And that's the, that became the infamous piano scene in, in that movie. That's dope. Yeah. I will go back and watch it again. I, actually, it's one, it kind of irritates me at the end that <laughs> clips, you know what I mean? But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, self-preservation is, it is what it is, right? Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but that was fun. I'm going back to watch that. And now that you've explained the piano scene, I'm definitely going to do it. I mean, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Amazing. But now you got this exciting new role. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Chief Detector, Chief Detective Oscar Finney. And you got yes. a British accent. No, I don't got a British accent. No, 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 I don't. Not at this one. And some other movie, if somebody wants want to put a British accent on me, I can do that. I can Definitely. do that. That's in my wheelhouse, but not not for uh, not for uh, Finley, not for you Finley. You know what? It sounded British to me. I'm from, <laughs> I'm from, I'm from the country, <laughs> and you know, maybe it was that no. Harvard educated. That, that, <laughs> that's <laughs> funny, man. That's what you it know. was. I'm from I'm from the deep, deep country. So where you from? Where I'm from Kansas. Oh, you from Kansas? Oh, part yeah. of Kansas. I was born in Topeka. Oh, Topeka, yeah, yeah. I spent a lot of time in Lawrence, Kansas. In Lawrence, okay. KU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of yeah, one of my great friends, Keith Lonica, may he rest in peace. He went to KU, and um, got a great uh, um, just circle of friends and family out there. Uh, um, um, through him, I mean, yeah. It's a nice place. KU, uh, I mean, Lawrence is a nice place to meet yourself. You know. Yeah, Lawrence is great, man. I've, every time I've gone there, it's been. Everyone is real down to earth and real. Everyone's really, really nice, uh, humble, and and whatever you're doing, you get you get support. If you're doing something, you can find people to support with no ego. Yeah. So that was my that was my personal experience with it. You know, I brought a film out there, and that community came through and just supported this film, and um and it and it was just great. It's an artistic city. They they support the arts heavily there. Yeah. Um, one of the more liberal cities in the state. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, but let's talk about Oscar Finley and, and Reacher and how did you come to, to get this series and what intrigued you about the movie? It's straightforward violence because he just kicks butt all the time. Oh yeah, man. Listen, you know, listen, if you want some if you want some action, you want some nonstop fight sequences and scenes, you are not gonna be disappointed with this one. It is all day, every day. 
every episode nonstop. Um, and Alan Richardson, who plays uh, Jack Reacher, I mean, he is, I mean, he was born to play this role, man. He is amazing. I mean, not only does he fit the physical requirements of the role in terms of how um, it was written in the book, but he also, what he brings acting wise, he just, he just kills it. But um, yeah, I play up Chief Detective Oscar Finley. Um, he's Harvard educated, tweed suit wearing. Um, he did 20 years. He's a retired police officer from the Boston PD. And um, he takes this new position that's available in Margrave, Georgia, a position that he wasn't able to attain in Boston. So he just has some unfinished business in terms of what he wants to aspire for his career. And um, this, he, he's hit with this murder case and Jack Reacher is the prime suspect. But Jack Reacher has a, he's a, he has a, a military background. He's a, he was also a special investigator and he's been um, charged with that murder. And this is the first murder in 20 years. And he wants to clear his name and solve it his way. But I want to solve it my way. Right. And so we bump heads, we butt heads throughout the entire series to try to get on the same page so we could both, you know, solve this crime. Okay, okay. I love Reacher. I love the movie, like I said. And I'm going to have, I had a ball. I actually had a ball watching the trailer. So I'm, oh, cool. I am going, that's why I was like, Harvard, you sound really, <laughs> you were using that King's English to the fifth degree player. I was you like, know, yeah, my, everybody keeps telling me, man, you look like a Kingsman up in there. You yeah, should be a Kingsman. Hey, put me, a, hey, I'll, let's do it. Hey, let's that, do it. That tweet suit. <laughs> that tweet suit. I was like, yeah, you got to be a special person to pull Dude, that Once off. I put that tight tweed suit on, there's no <laughs> other way to talk. There's no other it's way It's like to if talk. you got any, and I don't care where you're from, right. your accent is going to go away. <laughs> I mean, I have, a, I have a Brooklyn accent, and my Brooklyn accent just, I put that tight <laughs> tweed suit on, man, yeah, right. and I got I got to suck it in, too. You know, uh, there was a little pandemic situation happening, so I had to suck it in. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> Get that top button tight. Yeah, yeah, and man, it just it just gets you it just gets you talking. <laughs> just immediately, <laughs> but in uh, character immediately, uh, was, immediately. I'm like, where is bro man from? <laughs> okay, uh, I did not expect New York. <laughs> I did not expect New York. Oh yeah, man, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's a, that's a great thing with you know uh, SUNY Purchase College that training. You know, we learn to do different dialects and versus understanding how to uh, hearing yourself first and then being able to um change it, mm. you know, in, in a service of that particular character and where that character's from. Now, now you know what? Nobody's ever mentioned that to me. I, I've interviewed a few actors and I've talked about getting into character and, and dialects and, and, and things like that. You said hearing yourself first. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Dude, I didn't know I had a, I didn't know I had an accent. I mean, because I grew up in Brooklyn and Harlem and everybody, we all talk the same. So I didn't hear anything different. except when I went down South and I knew my family in the South, you know, my family's from North Carolina, South Carolina, and I could hear their accents, but I, we thought we were speaking standard American English. You know, at least I thought until I go to school and you start learning, you start learning um, phonetics and, and um, we worked with this book called with Edith by Edith Skinner called Speech with Distinction. And you start to really break down the sounds. And so once you learn things that way, then you're able to identify how you speak. But it's a lot of listening to yourself, recording yourself over and over and over again and saying, you know, for example, I'm from New York. I say York, W-A, I mean, Y-A-W-K, York, instead of York. And knowing that that's the difference. And oh, oh, I didn't know I say it like that. And everybody, New York, New York, New York, New York, New York. And then me saying, oh, it's New York, New York, New York, and understanding that sound. So it takes, it took a lot of practice. Um, um, and I, to this day, I still work on it, even approaching Oscar Finley. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, he's very deliberate in his speech and how he talks and right. he goes for a certain clarity um, that he's been working on. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's what I applied to him. Okay. So like, what was the most fun about getting into this character and bringing it to life? You know, the most fun was, I think there's a backstory. There's a, and I won't give it away. There's a deep backstory 
that makes this man who he is, that makes Oscar Finley who he is. He's just not uptight for any reason. And what I love so much, what Nick Santora, um, who, who, um, who, who adapted the series and was our showrunner and creator, and this was our fifth time working together, I believe. Our first time was on Breakout Kings. Um, but it was, it, it was delving into that story and committing to what that backstory is and knowing that there's substance behind every moment where he may seem like he got to stick up his butt or he's just stuck in his ways. There's a reason for it. There's a, okay. something that informs that. And the fact that the show takes the time to give this character and the audience a, a, an opportunity to see that, to see that. Mm. And I think once you understand why he is the way he is, I think you understand him and empathize with him more. You know, so that was the most fun to me. You know, that, that was the most fun to me and staying connected to that truth, you know, um, especially with the humor. There's a lot of jokes and things like that, but Oscar Finley isn't going for the joke. It just happens to be funny. He's not selling jokes. Right. It just happens to be funny. And so there's, there's been, there, were, there was times in Temptation when I, I want to sell the joke, but it's just like, no, it's, it's uh, the joke is more grounded. It happens in the it happens in the playing of it and doing of it, not in the selling of it. I, from what I saw in the trailer, yeah, you, you're a very straight guy. The character is a very straight man. Yeah, and Reacher plays off of that, and it turns the situation into a piece of comedy. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, because you got this, you got this uh, <laughs> like this yeah. Robin Big dynamic. Uh, just you know, just. Finley's being black, you reach to be white, but you got that dynamic, and you got two guys who don't who won't back down. You know, Finley doesn't Finley doesn't care how big Reacher is. Right. Don't care that you're six foot five, two hundred plus pound with, with a thousand muscles. You're I right. don't care. Mm -hmm. This is my case. I'm in charge, and he doesn't. He never. He never backs down. And I think ultimately Reacher respects that. He respects that. So, listen, Alan and I. Alan and I, we had a lot of fun playing with that dynamic. Um, and so it's, I think it's a great payoff, especially once they get on the same page. So this show is set to air to debut February 4th. February 4th, yeah. And Amazon Prime, yeah. Amazon Prime. And then uh, Paramount Plus, you said, as well. No, Paramount is one of the studios behind it. But ah. it's, only on, it's, only on, it's only on on Amazon Prime. Okay, Amazon Prime. So yeah. I, I'm going to actually have to get me a, see, I said country. I'm going to have to get me a uh, subscription to Amazon yeah. Prime because I'm not missing this. The, oh, yeah, please you don't. Guys, yeah. You guys were too good, too good in, the, in just the trailer. And I, yeah. I, was leaning, I was leaning forward. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So amazingly talented you are, sir. Thank and, you, sir. I appreciate uh, that. I'm going to go uh, watch my gangster movie again, too. So I can, <laughs> I can, I can get oh, yeah. as well. Yes, um, so I could have walked through Harlem. People, when that movie came out, people thought I was that dude. It was like, yo, that's that snitch right there. That's the snitch. Whoa. I'm like, it's a character. He's a character. That is, <laughs> yeah. No, that is is one of the things that, that uh, People who have impactful uh, roles, not in, in series or movies, people connect with that character all the way up to the point where they lose respect for that person, that character, and it trans and they put that on the actor. They do. They really, they <laughs> really, really do. Yeah. They really do. And I'm like, this piece took place in the 70s. Like, if I how the character would have aged by that. I mean, unless you got some incredible genes. Really? Look, literally, and it wasn't a documentary. Right, <laughs> like, right. This is not a documentary. Yeah. But the fact that people got, you know, loved that movie so much and was so invested, and like you said, was so, so invested in all the characters, I took it as a compliment. Yeah. I took it as a compliment. Yeah, definitely a compliment. I mean, you obviously connected with people. You obviously have such a powerful presence um, and a powerful delivery when you take on character. So... You know, I, I I'm going to watch it again. 
Oh yeah, check it out, man. Check it yeah. out. Yeah, I'm gonna won't be disappointed. The bread to get me some Amazon. <laughs> oh bad. yeah, get a yeah, yeah. That that's right. Get so, Amazon Prime and check it out. You have your own production company. Talk yeah. to us about. It. Talk to us about that because it, it's always uh, a pleasure to shine the light on people who wear the uniform that are doing things outside of the box. Yeah, um, name of the company is called Vision Vehicle Studios, and pretty much it's an I've always, like I said, I started out, I was a writer, I was acting, I was directing. And um, there was a time I felt like when I started, it was a bit taboo to do it all. And now it's not. Now it's celebrated to do it all. Right. And now you have so many um, outlets for um, your content. You know, content is king right now. Right. And so it's... Um, I love acting, but I also love directing. I love writing. I love giving young filmmakers and young writers and young artists an opportunity to express themselves. So what I pride myself with our company is we give other young artists and aspiring talent an opportunity to um, create something, you know, whether it's a short film, whether it's a, it's a feature. And and obviously I, gave, I, I empower myself to give myself that opportunity as well. So we've done, um, a few feature films, um, and we're based out of Los Angeles, California, and Waco, Texas. So we open up a branch out there. I know of all places. Yeah, Waco. <laughs> Waco. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we we got connected through. Um, um, we had a film in a Waco family film um, of uh, a faith festival, and we really got close with the. Um, um, Dr. Tyra Lindsay Warren, and she's the founder of that film festival. Okay. And also my wife and I were big Chip and Joanna Gaines fans for the, for years, watching Fixer Upper. Um, when we were okay. at home in LA, that's what we kept on the screen. So we visited Waco um, over the years, back and forth, especially checking out the silos and whatnot. But with, during the pandemic, we decided to make a move and open up a branch out there. And so far it's good. We found some great young talent out there. We shot our first feature film, out there a few months ago, ago called The Great Wall of Warren. I was directed by my business partner, Victor Hawks, and also written by him. And yeah, we're hoping to keep it going. You know, that film should be out sometime, um, I would say the end of the year. The end of the year. But it's just to empower yourself. It's just, it's just to empower yourself. It's just to empower ourselves. And if you can do more, you can do more than one thing and just celebrate it now as I would say 20 years ago, it just, didn't, it felt a little taboo. You couldn't even talk about that. Hey, I direct on the set without someone thinking that you want to direct their show. No, 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 no. I'm acting. I don't want to direct. I'm just right and now. It's celebrated now. So, um, so that's that's pretty much it. It's changed. I mean, if you can do it all, why not? Do yeah, it. why not? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, don't know why it. you get out. I think we won't even go. We won't even go into that 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 thought pattern. But I I, I know the reason. They didn't want to see folks with the uniform um, in all those different positions. Simple as that. They didn't feel like like we couldn't play quarterback. We couldn't play the rest of the parts in the in the film industry. So that's my my fifty nine year old. Sure. No, I get you. I yeah. get you. I um, get you. You've been interviewed probably by everybody they cat uncle and dog. Is there a question? that we as journalists have neglected to ask you that you've always wanted to answer? You know what? In this interview, you've asked me it. No one has ever asked me why acting? What got me going? What was that spark? Like when you asked me that, I literally, it took me back. I got a, I got a little emotional, uh. you know, because it seems, one thing I try to I try to do is never forget that you know I never try to I never forget that feeling you know um, of you know I want to say being at rock bottom but but uh, I, being a little lost and kind of losing faith and and hope and kind of just just um, and I know a lot of people think that you know just because I you know I grind and grind but I felt lost I, I didn't know what I didn't know exactly what to do and I decided to just just to bet on myself. You know, I felt like I always, you know, people know me, I, I believe in people. I take risk in people, I champion people. And I had to give a little bit, I had to give some of that to myself. 
And that was a problem for me. I don't know what that disconnect was where I couldn't do that for myself. You know, I never wanted the limelight or anything like that. You know, I was a shy kid. So I, 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 I shied away from it. But in order for me to accomplish this dream, I had to step out of my shell more um, and, and be big. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, so that actually, it was, a, I mean, literally it was, it was that one of those first questions you asked me. You know, I, I, I thank still, you for that. I appreciate that. I, you know, I try to be as thoughtful as I possibly can, yeah. considering that everybody does, you know, junkets and things like that. I'm like, we got some one-on-one time. Let me just, ease through this and and, and yeah. get all the juice out the meat, so to speak. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. I like that, yeah. So I was I was going to say, you know, it, it takes a lot of intestinal fortitude, first of all, to navigate the maze that is the entertainment industry. Yeah. You started early, so you started prepping yourself for the bumps and bruises that were going to come later on down the line. But as you started to meet resistance in certain areas, how did you keep your, your motivation and stay, stay the course? Yeah, the way I stay motivated is, um, I feel like as an actor and as an artist, sometimes any piece that I see that inspires me, it kind of, in a way, reinvents you. You know, something that really, really touches your heart. And you can either do something with it or just do or just sit on it. And I know for me, whatever that inspiration is, I try to do something with it. If I see a great performance, mm -hmm. I would go and do a monologue that I did in college, you know, or even like auditions, for example. Um, I know from my like my mindset because I'm like I feel like there's a big difference between the audition process and then the the booking process when you actually have the role, and I know some people get lost in what that huh, what that journey is. I mean that's a big mountain to climb. That's I mean one one job like uh, is is one yes on top of, the, of a mountain of no's, and how do you survive that? How do you survive that? And for me, I kind of took out, I kind of, I kind of took out the nose of it all. I'm like, as long as I give hundred percent to that particular audition, to that particular opportunity, I did my job. You know, my job isn't predicated on booking the job. My job is on predicated on showing up and bringing my 100% and, and being consistent at that. And in the audition process, I'm not always consistent at that. But I try to be, you know, I feel like I'm at a 95% of the time I, I got myself there, but definitely not 100% of the time because life happens. You could, you didn't get any sleep, the baby was crying all night or whatever. You know, there's other things that can happen, but they're not trying to hear all those excuses when it's time to show up right. and sh show me exactly what it is. Right. So that's it. And I don't stress out about it. I just decided I'm not going to let this thing stress me out. The only thing that stresses me out is, is, is if I don't give 100%. If I don't give 100%, then I'm not going to stress out. And also, I'd rather people critique me on what I think is my 100%. Mm. Because then I go, oh, so that was what I thought was 100 was really a 75. Oh, I got some more work to do. So if you go in there with excuses, I feel like you can't, you know, you can't really grow from that. You can't really learn from that. And so for me, that's how, that's my mentality, just to keep on learning, keep on learning. And that's what keeps me sane and not going mental and crazy because this role didn't work out and no role is mine until it's mine. And that's how I see it. Okay. All right. Well, you know what? I, I appreciate the time that you spent with me. Is there anything that you wanted to cover that I may have neglected? Yo, this was a great conversation. I don't know. I mean, I covered things I've never talked about <laughs> in, in all my years of doing junkies. So this is actually really, really refreshing, man. I, it was really, really refreshing. So I appreciate um, it. Yeah, I think we I think covered, yeah, covered a lot here. Yeah. All right. All right. The High Magazine Live Sessions. We've had Malcolm Goodman. He is the star detective, chief detective Oscar Fenwick. <laughs> in the Amazon studio, Skydance, 
uh, Media and Paramount. Yeah, sir. Reacher that that hits the screens, Amazon Prime, February the 4th. He's, man, he has come a long way. He has a long, long uh, journey to this point. And I'm happy to see him. And I swear, I swear, he doesn't have an English accent, but he wrote that <laughs> King's English to the point where you think he's British or <laughs> capable <laughs> with his Harvard educated character uh, and his three suits. It's an exciting opportunity to have some fun. Um, yes, sir. I'm retired military, so I, 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 I'm on Jack Reacher's side. We want to see how I yes, do sir. throughout this series uh, with Detective Finley. It is also a very big pleasure um, to see a brother playing the chief detective on a ma- on a massive show. Yes, sir. So, uh, yes, sir. We've had we've had our you know uh, uh, easy readers. My man, Easy Reader, who's had, you know, a few, you know, and and Sidney Poitier, of course. Well, that's right, man, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Right. You know what I mean? But it's it's great to see in this day and age that we're not being featured or in a series as the gangster all the time. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. peace and blessings to you. You too, bro. Thank you so much. I wish you much continued success, and hopefully we'll get a chance to talk again uh, when the new movie uh, comes out. That Absolutely. As the introduction to which I'm looking forward to. It. <laughs> All, right. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much.